Welcome to the HCI family of podcasts, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We share our own original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. Join us for practitioner-oriented content around all things leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with the HCI family of podcasts. Welcome to the podcast. In this podcast episode, I talk with Cara McNulty about CVS Health's Suicide Prevention Month campaign of 2023. Cara McNulty, welcome to the conversation today. Thanks, John. It's great to be here. It is a pleasure to be with you. Where are you joining us from? I live in Minneapolis, Minnesota, where the weather is absolutely spectacular right now. Wonderful. And I hope it stays that way. Hopefully you're really enjoying the fall weather and that you don't get winter coming in too soon. Uh, especially after last winter, I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah. My goodness, did we have a long winter. Uh, and so I'm really, really looking forward to fall this year. Hopefully we get that. I hope the same. <laughs> Minneapolis is a beautiful place. Thank you again for joining me. Today, we're going to be talking about CVS Health's Suicide Prevention Month campaign of 2023. I'm really excited to pick your brain about that. Of course, it's such an important topic, an important issue, and something that every organization, every leader can uh, play a role in as we uh, try to tackle this issue. As we get started, I wanted to share Cara's bio with everybody. Cara McNulty is president of behavioral health and mental well-being at CVS Health, a leading provider of mental health and employee assistance program solutions to members and communities around the globe. She oversees a national team that shepherds the development of CVS Health and Atna's programs, products, and capabilities designed to offer individuals easy access to quality, innovative treatments, and meet people wherever they are along the continuum of mental well-being. Now, Cara, I wanted to pause there. Anything you would like to highlight about your own personal background, professional context, or CVS health generally before we dive on into the conversation around this uh, suicide prevention promotion campaign? Sure. You know, the only thing I would add, John, is I'm a population health scientist. And so what that means is I look at populations and look at what's getting in the way of people being their best. So it's a means of reducing disparity And there isn't one single health issue, concern, wonderful, happy event that isn't impacted by your mental health. Yet we often treat our mental health separate from our physical health. So as we have this conversation, one of the things that we at CBS are really working to do is treat people holistically, not separate their head and their heart, but look at them as a whole human in their own ecosystem. Yeah, absolutely. It, it feeds into everything, right? And of course, we talk about preventative health. Like I go see my my doctor, the family practitioner doctor, and get my physical checkup and all these sorts of things, right? We talk about that. Now, I will also say we probably don't do enough in terms of preventative health generally, right? But when, we, when it comes to mental health, uh, that's something, while the, the narrative and societal norms around mental health have shifted over the last couple of decades, we're still not there yet, right? We're, we're still not to the point where people are thinking about it in the same way as you think, oh, I need to go in for my yearly checkup to meet with my doctor. I need to make sure that I'm doing these things to make sure that I'm just keeping myself uh, physically healthy. The same thing applies to our mental health. Uh, and as we apply this for a moment into the workplace, certainly all of this applies to us individually, in our homes, in our communities. In the workplace, though, if I'm leading a team of people, you know, I want them to be able to be healthy and productive. I want them to be able to show up. I want them to be able to contribute. I want them to be creative and innovative. And that only happens as people can bring their whole best self to work. Uh, And that means mental health. That means we have to be aware of these issues and we have to foster a healthy environment 
and we have to provide the supports necessary so that when people need support, they can get it so that they can be their best self at work. It's so spot on. I mean, we want people to bring their full being to work. And, you know, when you introduced me, one of the things that you might recall is we say behavioral health and mental well-being. Yeah. And mental well-being is that broad category of focusing on prevention and intervention and just like preventative care. You know, we get our colonoscopies, we get our mammographies, right. we get our teeth cleaned, etc. Preventive when it comes to mental well-being is is a daily practice mm. of nurturing our mental health, using skills and tools to advance and give our brains and our emotions and our mental well-being a rest or a jolt of energy. It's not even enough to have a once a year checkup, but right. we again <laughs> don't, as a society, we often don't talk about that. And in fact, when you hear people use often the term behavioral health, people don't like because it makes it sound like, oh, if I just changed my behavior, then it would all be better. Well, as a woman who has experienced postpartum anxiety, I didn't have a shot. I, you yeah. know, I, I I didn't have the skills and tools at the time to change said behavior in order to get to a better place. So we even use different language to make it mm -hmm. more inclusive and inviting because if we want people to show up to work and be their best or be their best in community, we have to make it okay for them to talk about their mental health, talk about maybe serious mental health issues, and talk about what they're doing or what we can help them with to make sure they're getting the support and care they need. Yeah, and and thank you for that addition. You know, I, I I referenced the annual checkup, right? Well, that's good. Like we need to do the annual checkups. I'm getting to the age where I'm going to have to start doing more of these types of things, which I'm not super looking forward to. But <laughs> it's also a fact that if I'm talking about my physical health, that there are all sorts of things I should be paying attention to every single day. So you t you talked about going to see the dentist. Dentist, you're doing your checkup. Well, hopefully I'm brushing and flossing and and using mouthwash daily, right? Hopefully that's right. A, a habit, that's a pattern. Hopefully I'm I have good sleep habits. Hopefully I have good eating habits. Hopefully I have good exercise habits. Like all of these things are going to be really important to my physical well being. And the same thing applies to mental health and mental well being. And, and frankly, you know, sleep and diet and right. exercise is going to be a, an important part of that as well. Um, right. But if 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 we're getting into these habits and doing these things that are going to help with our, our mental well-being, generally speaking, uh, on a regular basis, and we're mindful of this, uh, it's going to make all the difference in the world. And, you know, I was chuckling as, as you were referring to, you know, you can't just go meet do do like a, a annual mental health check-in, you know, like I'm going to go meet with a counselor once every year, or, you know, every so often that's, that's silly on its face. And everyone I think would recognize how silly that is. Um, but if, if that is silly, then, then what, like, what, what are we going to do to make sure that we are doing the things necessary to stay on top of it? Uh, and that's exactly. where it comes into all of these, these daily habits, these patterns, and and the the mental tools, you know, the the frameworks and the and the different um, mindsets that are going to help us to deal with the natural, you know, the the stresses, anxieties, the things that are going to happen to us each and every day because the world is a messy, complex place, and adulting is not always easy. In fact, it's almost never easy, and uh, you just have a lot to deal with all the time. Right, right. Adulting isn't easy. Adolescenting isn't yeah. easy, and yet when we don't talk about our mental well-being and our mental health, what we do is we create even more myth and secrecy and a veil instead of showing the normalcy of what it's like to nurture your mental well-being, what it's like to have a disruption because all of us experience some type of mental health disruption. Yeah. It doesn't mean it's going to be a mental health illness. But it doesn't mean if you have a mental health illness, let's say depression, anxiety, complex anxiety, schizophrenia, bipolar, that you're broken or that you're less than. Yeah. You have, you have a chronic condition. 
we don't we don't say to people who have diabetes or uh, hypertension that they are less than. And so really how we support people in understanding that, you know, some people will have mental illness. Everyone will have some kind of mental health disruption, stress, anxiety, grief, loss, but how we deal with it, how we work to engage so it doesn't have to seem so foreign. Yeah. You know, that those are the important things. And even talking about counseling and therapy, I mean, Counseling and therapy doesn't have to be like, oh, we should whisper, I'm going to counseling. <laughs> you know, right. it's like it's like cleaning your house. You know that great feeling when you your house is out of order and you clean it and it just feels good. You feel like you have things in order. That's what counseling and therapy often feels like. It's hard to get started, but once you do it, you feel fantastic usually. Yeah. Yeah, wonderful. All right. Well, let's go ahead and dive on into some more of the specifics around CVS Health's Suicide Prevention Month campaign. Uh, I think it's it's wonderful uh, that this is an emphasis um, and that you're making this contribution. Walk us through a little bit about what this looks like, uh, what you've done in the past and what this is looking like this year. Sure. So, you know, September is National Suicide Month, Suicide Prevention Month. And We highlight this campaign in September, but we are diligently working on this every day, 365. So although we're highlighting in September, we're always working on this. And what we are doing is looking to remove the myths and the barriers and normalize the importance of your whole health, meaning your mental and your physical And by doing that, we are addressing issues that are prevalent amongst all of us. I mean, nine out of 10 Americans are concerned about mental health, whether it's their own or someone in their family or in their community. And they think we should be talking about it. We should be um, providing services, but only a third of us know where to go to get services, what to ask for, how to talk to someone. So the needs are high, but our our muscle, our skill on finding resources is lower. And that's not a surprise because it's a complex system. So we're also working to provide education, services, clinical care and resources to democratize access to quality care. And not when people are in crisis. I mean, we do Mm. that anyways, but prior. So our, our campaign really focuses on what are the trends we're seeing? So what, what are we seeing happening? I mean, unfortunately, suicide had been on a decrease and suicide has since 2020 started to rise again. At that time, we as a company made a commitment. We believe that suicide is preventable in most cases. And so we said, what can we do as a healthcare company? And we said, we are going to put a line in the sand and we're going to hold ourselves accountable, hold ourselves accountable that by serving our Aetna members, which is part of CVS, our insured commercial members, we're going to reduce suicide attempts 20% by 2025. I will tell you, John, what that took was revamping everything we were doing when we were meeting the needs of our members. That means not waiting for someone in crisis. It means providing early upfront screenings, whether you're calling in because you can't find your medical card or you are looking for support because you have a new cancer diagnosis, we're doing a quick assessment called the PHQ-2. And if someone flags for potentially having suicide ideation or suicide ideality, we're then giving a fuller um, assessment. So we changed how we're interacting with people. We changed how we are messaging. Again, getting that messaging up front not waiting till people are in crisis. So whether you're getting care for 
you know, you just found out you're pregnant and you're having a baby. We know that comes with stress. We know that comes with maybe some sleepless nights or anxiety, getting up front, talking about your mental health right away, whether it's a new cancer diagnosis, we know that depression and a cancer diagnosis go together. So getting up front. And then last, we have deployed a whole host of interventions that really support people to address their mental health up front, to interact with them if they have had a suicide attempt or are flagging clinically for suicide ideation, and or if they've been discharged from a facility where they had an attempt and now are, thankfully it wasn't um, a follow through and they're going home. So what we can do to support them. So we're really looking at it from all avenues to make sure we're meeting people where they're at Mm -hmm. and also normalizing that you don't have to do this alone. No one has to do this alone. I appreciate you you approaching this from a multifaceted, multi-pronged approach, right? Uh, Kind of holistically taking a step back, looking at what are we currently doing? What's working? What can we tweak? What can we adjust to take away barriers, to make sure that we're being more proactive and preventative rather than reactive and responsive, you know, in in a crisis mode. Uh, I'm wondering if you could speak to kind of the access to services question, because I know that's that's one that I hear a lot about. Um, You know, if someone is trying to get in to see a therapist, how it can be really hard, long wait lists, it takes a while to, to get into a regular schedule. And I know there are clinics, there are places where you can have kind of those emergency types of situations. Um, there are suicide hotlines, there there are those sorts of things. I'm, I'm wondering, you know, how, how you're approaching trying to tackleize that, the services yeah. and the resource piece. It's a great question, because we do know that there are access issues. And the access issues sometimes are for specific types of providers, adolescent psychiatry, adult psychiatry. But even before that, one of the most important things we need to do is help people to understand how to get support before things are in a crisis situation. Like, what's your plan? And One of the things that we have worked really hard to do is to provide any primary care provider that we work with and contract with support for assessing for depression, anxiety, suicide ideality. So helping those primary care providers know the latest tools and assessments. And um, even for those that are interested providing them opportunities to get additional training in suicide and suicide ideation. You know, primary care providers often say, gosh, I learned this, but it was 15 years ago and so much Mm -hmm. has changed. So we do a lot of education with primary care providers because primary care providers are often seeing people first. So that's one thing. The other thing is, so know that you can go to your primary care provider, but we can't expect people to know what they don't know. So, Sometimes, for example, when I was experiencing this really bad bout of postpartum anxiety, I thought I was having a heart attack. I mean, my heart was racing. I was sweating. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. I'm I'm like, I think I'm having a heart attack. Well, I was having a panic attack. Mm. And, um, but I didn't know. And, you know, I'm in healthcare. So helping people understand that they don't have to know all, all the details, but they do have to know, okay, something's not right. I'm going to reach out for help. And that help could be my primary care provider. It could be going to um, a CVS minute clinic. So at our CVS minute clinics, we offer easy assessments for anxiety, depression, um, looking at, are you flagging for additional self-harm maybe situate in self-harm issues or, or situations that are causing you additional distress. So any CVS minute clinic, we provide that care. You might be going into a CVS minute clinic because you have an ear infection. We're going to screen you and say, you know, how are you doing? We're going to help you. So we make that really easy for people to have the conversation. 
And remember, when you're in a CVS Minute Clinic, people don't know why you're there. They think you might be there for your flu shot yeah. or for an exam. The other thing we've done is within 14 different states in our CVS Minute Clinic footprint, we have put licensed clinical social workers mm. in those locations and in those states. And what we do is we are providing assessments. So let's say like me, feeling like I'm having um, a heart attack or knowing something isn't right. I can go in, have an assessment with a licensed clinical social worker, talk through what I'm experiencing. They help me put together an action plan. Maybe that action plan is I need to see a psychiatrist. That licensed clinical social worker is going to help get you to that psychiatrist by creative relationships we have built around our CVS Minute Clinic ecosystem. Or maybe you need to see that provider and you set up, you know, three sessions or you set up two sessions. The other thing our CVS licensed clinical social workers are doing is they're helping to navigate people's benefits. Most of us don't know, let alone, do I see a psychiatrist, a psychologist, a social worker, but what's covered? And is this going to be out of network? And so we are payer agnostic at CBS, so we can help you look at your benefits. We can also help for people who don't have health care coverage and ensuring that they get the care and support. So think of in these states of us as a mental health navigator. Hmm. So we're working with those primary care providers to ensure that anyone can get the care and support they need via their primary care provider. We're educating those primary care providers, and then we're working within our own ecosystem. So we're in 14 states, but soon to be virtual in all states. So it's really a nice way to not have to know what you don't know. And that's mm -hmm. really important in mental health. Well, Cara, this has just been a really great conversation. I know we've only scratched the surface of this really complex challenging and important topic, uh, but I appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to come and talk with me in the audience about this. And hopefully we can all help to spread the word around Suicide Prevention Month uh, and help to better support those on our teams and our organizations, but also those in our personal lives. Before we wrap things up for today, I just wanted to give you a chance to share with the audience how they can connect with you, find out more about your work, your team, uh, the services that you're providing, and then provide us the final word on the topic for today. Sure. So really important for people to know that they aren't alone. Our health is contiguous. So my health impacts my family's, my family's health impacts me. And we all care deeply about one another. So know that at cvshealth.com, we have assessment tools, free guides for parents, for teachers, for caregivers, for adolescents on understanding suicide, anxiety, depression, serious mental illness. We offer trainings and resources all free on that site. So really important. You can follow me on Instagram at Cara McNulty or reach out, reach out to me through cvshealth.com. And probably the biggest takeaway I would ask people to think about is you do not have to do this alone. Having mental health disruption, having mental health issues is normal. It's a normal part of our life and it's what makes us who we are. And so knowing you do not have to do this alone, we at CVS Health are here to help you. Primary care providers are here to help you. There are hotlines, our local minute clinics. And again, you don't have to wait. You don't have to do this alone. Well said. Thank you so much, Cara. It's been a real pleasure. I encourage the audience to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Cara can do for you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week. 